tuning in to the online broadcast network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Let the buzz begin! Oh! Get the tables. We got a lot to talk about. Royal Rumble 2015 in the books. We are officially on the road to WrestleMania. And you after buzzers can make sure you follow us on YouTube and iTunes and SoundCloud. Don't forget, leave comments on those. Subscribe, give a five-star ratings. And of course, do that hashtag ABTV Royal Rumble to keep this conversation going. Because we got a lot to talk about. Welcome to After Buzz Royal Rumble, everybody. I am Christian Rosenberg. You can follow me on Twitter, at Real Rosenberg. We got a, an esteemed panel here this evening. First off, the lovely lady to my left. You see her with me on SmackDown After Buzz. And once again, your predictions champion, Miss Corey Takei at Corius. Hello, guys. Thank you so much. I mean... You have the title upside down. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Yes, yes. Oh, gosh. She couldn't predict that. Don't be that. jealous. You would hold the title upside down if you could. I would be wearing, wearing so, around my neck if I finally so. won it. <laughs> and, guys, I am proud to introduce to you. We are creating a new pay-per-view After Buzz team. The wrestling team in After Buzz just continues to grow. We got two of the members right here. Guys, please go ahead and introduce yourselves. I am Daniel Weiss. You can follow me at It's Daniel Weiss on Twitter. Hello and welcome to me. <laughs> welcome to you, indeed. And yeah. the... And, Lovely uh, gentleman next to you. and I'm Damien Mizdow. I believe that's what I'm going to be for Halloween this year. Fair enough. Uh, I mean, going for it. But you know, I am George Hermosa. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at G Hermosa. Hopefully the, the, the logo's up. G H E R M O Z A. You know, you know, Alexis has got this on lock. Right, it's fine. And she gave you a look. Have some faith. Have some faith. She's okay. got this. She's, Ooh, she's got cold in here. Can you see it right there? Hey, am I doing it right? G hey. Hermosa. Well, there you go. Let's talk about a lot of things that we saw tonight. I mean, a lot to get over, but. Before we break down match for match, because obviously we know the last two matches we're going to talk about mm -hmm. quite a bit. Overall impression of the first pay-per-view of 2015. Danny, what do you think? I give it a B. Okay. Are we I, grades? I, okay. That's pretty good. Well, if I'm going to grade it, I give it a B. <laughs> I thought that overall it was very entertaining. There were a lot of parts that I loved and a lot of parts that I did not like. Uh -huh. So it kind of evened itself out, and then there were some things that we will talk about that I loved very much that made it a B. Okay. Corey? Um, are we doing ABC? Like no, you can do whatever you, do you, whatever want. you want. It's just an overall thought. He gave a grade. <laughs> I'm not going to give it a grade, but I thought, you know, for the most part, it was pretty good. There was some a really, really good match, uh, mm -hmm. the lesnar Cena rollins match. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, there was a, quite a big letdown at the end. And yeah, so I mean, it was like up and down, pulling my heartstrings, you know. I agree with her. I, 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 I look at it more interesting, as far as some of the booking of our, as far as, far as the Royal Rumble match goes. But I mean, it was pretty good. I think, of course, the triple threat match being the highlight of the night. But really good mm -hmm. match. We'll get into that a little bit later. Yeah, this was, to my memory, the very first Royal Rumble. Royal Rumble is my favorite pay per view of the year, and to me, this was the very first Royal Rumble where the actual Rumble match was not my favorite match of the night. Oh, interesting. Um, Ever. I, I, I mean, I can't recall another time because I just always loved the concept of the Rumbles. Mm -hmm. Even some, obviously, better than others. But it was, it was mm -hmm. just like the last like 20, 20, like the second half of the Rumble match in itself. But we'll break all that down. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a, a phone call momentarily from, from um, our third pay-per-view after Buzz host who was live in Philly at the time. Steve Kaufman will be calling in any moment. But let's start things off. Talk about the kickoff match. Uh, New Day versus Cesaro Day. and Tyson Kidd. Not the six-man elimination that was advertised because the other day, Xavier Woods walked around with a boot on his foot. <laughs> so it was just like, how are they going to do this? Obviously, they did not. So we have ended up having a tag match. But this is one of those matches where it was just like, okay, why is this on the pre-show? This mm -hmm. was... They, I mean, you would always expect these four to deliver, and they did. It was a very entertaining match. 
I agree. I really like the team of Kid and Cesaro. Um, I would like to be them more successful as singles wrestlers, mm -hmm. but man, together yeah. they're just awesome as well. I mean, those guys can just have so creative with their moves. Um, even Adam Rose, I kind of think he's kind of coming into his own as a heel. Um, you know, obviously when he came in as a face, everybody kind of just didn't get him. Mm -hmm. But I, don't, I like I like the shirt he was wearing too. I don't know if you saw. It, it, it was it like was it the Finn Balor NXT shirt? It, it was it was more. We'll get to Steve in a second. It was more like I don't know if you've seen the Bullet Club. Yeah, but it said I don't know it had something to do with the McMahon podcast. It says the Brass Ring Club. Oh, and there's a cat on it because they're cat. Oh, cool. I need to take a closer look at that. But now, as I just mentioned a moment ago, on the phone with us, another member of our pay per view after show group, Mr. Steve Kaufman at Steve Kaufman, who was in Philly chowing out a cheesesteak and recuperating from the Royal Rumble. Steve, how's it going? Going great. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Now you were in the midst. You were surrounded by ravenous Philly fans, because Philly fans are one of the harshest, I think is the lightest way to put it, mm -hmm. as far as any... That's a, yeah. that's any, a compliment. Any, that's yeah. a compliment yeah. for them. Yeah. So, and that's harsh, would, we would actually be offended for you to say just harsh. <laughs> like, really? That's <laughs> it? We booed, Santa, we booed Santa Claus, we threw an ice ball at a referee. <laughs> We're not the nicest people. <laughs> Philly fans. Aww. Well, now, let me ask you, being in the midst of that, let, I mean, in your case, because you're just, you know, be joining us in a few minutes because you're all the way on the other side of the country and it's a lot later where you're at. Just yeah. talk about the atmosphere in that arena, those last 10 minutes of the pay-per-view, where it just seemed like there was not a single happy person in Philadelphia. Um, I call that the Cena effect, that unless you were, unless you're a kid or a girl. Excuse me? At least in... Mm -hmm. At least in Philadelphia, <laughs> you you were not happy with Roman Reigns winning that match. Mm -hmm. Now, I haven't been to a live event for, for WWE since SummerSlam in Los Angeles. So I was actually really taken aback. And this was early on in the pay-per-view when they showed that uh, that first segment where it was a pre-tape with Roman Reigns saying why he was going to win the Rumble. Right. I could not even hear whatever Roman Reigns said oh, wow. because everyone was busy booing him. Wow. No, no, that was the he's of the, the man for the job. Yeah, now coming from you, Steve, being in Philly and maybe some of us in the panel here, do you think it would have mattered if it was in another city? Or, no, I mean, obviously, last, last year saying. in Pittsburgh, no. um, Batista got the same treatment. <laughs> right. So, I mean, same thing, maybe but it's a nobody Pennsylvania cared thing. about Batista. Yeah. Uh, I, I was asking around, and the point that was made was that when they cheered Roman Reigns against Batista, it was more because they didn't want Batista. Mm -hmm. Similar to at the tail end of this match after The Rock comes out and everybody cheered The Rock and he cheered the hero save, but once it became time for Roman Reigns to win the match, a Rusev, a Rusev chant broke out. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't think uh, I yeah, heard that. Which, I heard that. Which is the furthest <laughs> thing that the <laughs> right. WWE wants right now. Let's have the no, Russian... Not even a little. <laughs> but this is but this is also the same crowd, and I'm sure the second Roman Reigns got to the back, if he was even worried about it, they would say this this crowd loved Lesnar. This crowd she gave Seth Rollins a standing ovation. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. crowd hated the New Day. <laughs> this is a different crowd. Right. This is one of those backwards crowds, like Philadelphia, or Toronto, anyway, or Toronto, MSG, MSG, yeah. um, like an East Coast, an East Coast wrestling crowd, but Philadelphia yeah. prides itself Chicago. on just cheering the bad guy. I myself, aside from Roman Reigns on the microphone, I think he's perfect and it's his year. Mm -hmm. So do you think, I think they're in Hartford, Connecticut okay. tomorrow. I could be very, very wrong. It's, it's so, well, they're going to stay around that yeah, area. Yeah, I mean, do so. you think Roman will get that uh, pop, that, you know, that face um, pop? They, or? I will also say they need to get in their cars right now. And why is that? I, I was seeing some tweets. Be 20 inch, I was, there's uh, going to be about a foot of snow across the uh, entire okay. East Coast oh, this I, time tomorrow. Cause I, was gonna, I was receiving some tweets right before we went on the air of people saying that there were fans blocking some WWE employees from leaving the lot. That's what I thought you were referencing. Oh, no. Okay. Although, funny fact, I, because at the Wells Fargo Center, which I've been to many times for, many times for Flyers games and Phantoms when the Phantoms played there, right at the Broad Street exit, the, there's, a giant, there's a giant gated off place where you can overlook the the loading dock pretty much and there'd be like tour buses lined up and I was standing there and there were like 200 people standing there just 
waiting to, to see who comes out and then kind of catcall them when they do. And John Cena came out in his gear. In, in the blue, in the same blue shirt and shorts that he was wearing for that match, he walked. He walked in the blistering cold to his bus. Oh wow! He was filming Total Divas. That's what was happening. <laughs> <laughs> he was in character. He was in uniform. <laughs> well, Steve, let's kind of switch gears. Obviously, we're talking about you know how angry the Philadelphia crowd sounded at the end, but. I gotta think, I mean, from where I was obviously just sitting watching on television, to me it seemed like the biggest pop of the entire night was Bubba Ray Dudley. I mean, mm. d would you agree Not with that? Me. He got a pretty huge pop. Um, Ziggler got a pretty huge pop. Mm -hmm. Daniel That's Bryan looked like he got a huge pop too. Daniel Bryan, Daniel Bryan got the huge, expectable, mm -hmm. everyone puts their hands in the air pop. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure you guys are going to get to that, but I feel... I feel part of the reason there was such anger at Rome by the time Roman Reigns came out was that Daniel Bryan was already out of the match. Yeah, right. Yeah, that was definitely a, a big shocker, which which we're we're going to get to. But yeah, um, Steve, sure. Steve, before because it's like w about one a.m. where you're at. Before before you go, was there any other you know real interesting notes that we might have not caught watching at home that that was um, in the arena? In the pre taped segment where Paul Heyman walked on, um, Triple H and Stephanie were talking about Sting. Mm -hmm. And then they pan over to Paul Heyman. Mm -hmm. That was one of the top five biggest pops of the night. It, it felt like that watching on TV, mm -hmm. to be honest okay, with you. Okay, cool. Yeah. Philadelphia right. loves that guy. But it's, it's weird because even when. Royal Rumble and five were yeah, even even <laughs> even um a previous time they were in Philly and on Raw or SmackDown or whatever, it didn't feel like Paul Heyman, he got a big pop, but it just it seemed like tonight he got an even bigger pop. Well, he got an even bigger pop because everyone loved Brock Lesnar tonight. Yeah, yeah it was weird. And Brock Lesnar was cheered more than Rollins and I mean, respected more than Cena, but mm -hmm. even more than Rollins. Well, I think that he yeah. deserved it after the match. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, Steve, we we thank you so much for taking some time um, from you know waiting on your cheesesteak to to call in with us. Um, of course, you can follow him again on Twitter at Steve Kaufman, and you'll be able to check him out. He'll be here doing a fast lane next lane. month as well. So uh, Steve, I will be here in the fast I will be lane. in that chair. You'll be um, in this I chair. Do have to ask? Do I have a belt? You do not. <laughs> Corey Corey defeated you with the in the tiebreaker. The girl, you know, the one that's supposed to like Roman Reigns, she won. Hmm. And she just wow. smack talked you. Hmm. But she does like Roman uh, Reigns, so. Oh, oh, physically, yeah, so, of course. <laughs> all right. Yes. It came to the tiebreaker. It came, sure it came down to the tiebreaker. Sure, I'm sure he had nowhere, nowhere near eight Superman punches. I think you so. only had. I think you only had one, and, Cor had one. and yeah. Corey picked seven, and you picked eight. So uh, you you lost you lost by one. For this title on your who, first out. Who, first among, who among us this time was the person who, like on the Price is Right, just said one? None of us, actually. Was, everyone was over. Well, I picked like oh, 13. Was everyone over? Nobody said one? No. I should have just said one. I'd, I'd be the <laughs> champion right now. You would. That right. bell will be yours. But instead, I'm not going to lie, it, it does look nice on Corey. <laughs> Enjoy your cheesesteak. Well, we can say that, though, comparatively, because we can't see him right now. True. That's a fair point. <laughs> yes. All right, Steve, thanks so much for calling in, and we'll see you when you get back out west. Absolutely, guys. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Adios. All right, bye. All right, that I was... I hate that guy. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I'm hey, kidding, Steve. We got great. the live Philly crowd reaction there, which was pretty cool. Thank no, you, Steve, fantastic. for calling in. Um but yeah, so kind of just wrapping up, Cesaro and Kid in the kickoff match, they actually won their match. Mm -hmm. which is nice. Remember how they were hyping up New Day? Mm. Remember when that happened? And but now they're losing? For like five minutes? Yeah. <laughs> I know, it's very, it's interesting, but I thought that they put on a great match. And they what's did. interesting is that they hyped them up so much, and I feel like Cesaro's always been Cesaro. He has his thing. Mm -hmm. Tyson Kidd, his gimmick is apparently a guy waiting for the bus with his headphones on. I feel like they need something better for him. Does he have cat paw prints on his boots? I think so. Well, he might. He's got because, cats all over him now. Well, his gimmick, too, is uh. just whatever's happening on Total Divas. Oh, it's Natty, his wife, who they're See, kind of... And I watched Total Divas, and I thought they were getting a divorce. No, that's pending. Okay. 
Okay, but right. she'll still come with them to the to the right. to the match. Contract business relationship. relationship. Okay, so okay, I get it. So T, uh, TJ and Natty are getting a divorce, but Tyson Kidd and Natalia are still they're still a couple. They're okay. Still I get perfect. it. Right. Yeah. Very okay. much in love. Well, I get it. Well said. Okay. <laughs> um, then the pay per view officially begins, mm -hmm. and we kick things off with the legendary New Age Outlaws. They make their way to the ring and they take on the, the, the not so legendary <laughs> Ascension. Um, this match was pretty much exactly how I thought it would be. Kinda. Billy Gunn looked great. Yeah, a nice little you still got it chant from the Philadelphia crowd. Yeah. And if you get that from Philly, mm -hmm. that's a good pretty sign. Good. Um, Ascension win this match, I don't think really to anyone's surprise. Yeah. Yeah, no. It's just they're kind pushing of pushing them. Yeah, they're, they're mean, trying to push them. With the way they'd be kind of getting booked, I mean, that match should have been a little bit too, a little bit quicker. Like really? I, thought they, they, I thought it was quick. I thought it was but I'm saying they should have destroyed the Outlaws. I mean, here's a, here's a team that were relevant 16 years ago against a team that should be relevant now and coming you know on the up. I mean, if it was the Road Warriors, Road Warriors destroyed everybody 25 years ago. And if agree. you're gonna compare it to them, I mean, good luck. You got a long way ahead of you. I agree. I feel like if they're really gonna push these guys with that gimmick, the Ascension, the face paint, mm -hmm. the get the get up that they're wearing. A, they shouldn't have been knocked out by the classic legends on Raw, and <laughs> they should just come in and wreck everybody. Do the old 90, late 90s Kane, where he would interrupt four times in a night and just take everybody out. They should come in, that. wreck everybody, and build up this legend. But I feel like what they're kind of doing now is almost kind of what they really started with Randy Orton, not obviously to that successful extent, but Randy Orton was the legend killer. He but would they wrestle... got beat up by NWO on Monday. Right, oh, the I, Ascension. No. Right, but I guess, but Randy Orton, there were times where he got beat up by Mick Foley. Mm -hmm. There were times where he got slapped in the face by Harley Race or whatever it was, and you know he eventually you know came back and actually had matches with them. Mm -hmm. They were more competitive than they should have been, but then he went over and eventually kind of elevated him. I'm thinking that's the same strategy that they have for the Ascension, but clearly at the moment no one's buying it. Mm -hmm. It's just they got to do something to make that work. I agree. Should be interesting. Corey, any thoughts? Uh, I'm just looking at the chat roll. What's the chat roll thinking? Need, what are they saying? Um, <laughs> some jokes. The New Age Outlaws should have had X Pac in their corner. Uh, HBU says Corey, the Ascension are wannabe god. Of war rip off if you will play games you know i doing. agree completely yeah i don't play it's true. I, yeah, yeah. Me and you, Georgia, or, uh, i'm busy comparing know. them to like old school tag teams like yeah. the powers oh, of pain too. yeah and go daniel yeah what <laughs> all right <laughs> so I we go from it. we go from that to the uh tag team title match the usos defending once again against miz and damian mizdow crowd goes nuts for mizdow as they should. As yes. they always do. He's yeah, but especially, again, in Philly. Mm -hmm. I love Philly crowds. Mm -hmm. And they lived up to their hype tonight, overall. So good job, Philly. Um, but yeah, Miz Dow just doing his usual stuff. Um, the point where Miz goes to try to tag and then waves yeah. it away. That's classic heat. So many people hate on the Miz, mm -hmm. but that is what a heel does. I would be upset if he did tag him in. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Do, but you don't want that. The right. fun of it is, is seeing him copy the Miz. And if he's in the match, then he, unless he's gonna get in the match and then stand there and pretend to be on the ropes like Miz would be, and then get beat up, then that would have been funny. Mm. But the fact that he didn't, and then he still had to stand on the side and then get up and take a crotch shot at the top of the ropes was fantastic. Yeah. Um, always good stuff. Again, whenever these four, I mean, it's more so these three. Because honestly, the last couple of months, Miz, again, has really stepped up his game because he's pretty much working handicap yeah. matches. Right. Yeah. He's not never tagging in Miz out. And these guys had a great match. Um, Dude, big ups to the Usos. I, have, I don't remember yeah. a last, or even if ever, they've had a pay-per-view match where that didn't deliver. Even Ever dating bat last year mm -hmm. with uh, against uh, Harper and Rowan, those matches were awesome. Yeah, um, of course. Great. Fast forward now, Miz and Miz now. These matches are pretty awesome too. I like the, I like the little adjustment they did to their face paint. Kind of, it's more fuller. Yeah, it was a little was, more detailed. Yeah. Well, I, like I found that. out tonight. You may or may not know this that it's a tribute to Umaga. 
their face paint uh, together was his oh, face paint. Did they mention that on a... No, a friend of mine told okay. me that. That would make sense. Yeah. Because he's the one who brought them in. Yeah. And their special, what was yeah. it, like 10 hours? Or oh, that's like Houston. Yeah, I yeah, that. that that's... was Umaga picking them up and saying, mm-hmm. let's go. I think it was a little, um, I was going to say sad, when they said, I think when they signed their deal was the same day that Umaga passed away. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so that's I what I heard, heard about face that. painted. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, that, that, that does make sense. It's pretty cool. I mean, that is really cool. But yeah, like George, like you were saying, you know, put the use against Miz and Miz now, they deliver. Mm-hmm. Against the Wise, they deliver. Mm-hmm. Against Golden Stardust, they deliver. Against, I mean, they'll whenever they eventually face the Ascension, because you know that's the way it's of going. Course. It's yeah. going to deliver. So, more props to them. And... And even like at the very end, when they do the Uso splash, but Miz was not positioned right, mm-hmm. and you know you gotta adjust yourself in midair. Still lands a great. Usos retain their titles. I really hope they uh, hold the belt at least till Mania. I think they're from San Francisco or that area from up north. Are they? They're from California. So it'd be pretty cool to kind of defend Cali, those belts, kind of I guess near their hometown. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that'd be pretty cool. So I'm hoping that. I, I think they're gonna retain it all the way through. Might as well. Go I ahead. hope so. Go I hope ahead. I hope they're not on the pre-show this time though. I think they've been. Uh, I think they've uh, they, haven't, no. they haven't had a Mania match. Yeah, think. they haven't. Yeah. I think last year was the pre-show. I think the year before that as well. Yeah, you would know because no. you're you're the walking yeah. wrestling encyclopedia, <laughs> so you know specifically. Yeah. If people think I hashtag <laughs> dork, but it's okay. Uh, you don't want to be called a dork. <laughs> no, no, yeah, really Maybe okay. nerd. Nerd is better. Okay, hashtag nerd. Yeah, hashtag nerd. Yeah. Yeah. Nerds are great now, so yeah, it's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The geek will inherit the yeah. earth. Mm-hmm. The geek will inherit the earth. Um, says the geek. Says the geek. I'm, I'm a full-blooded geek. <laughs> um, we're backstage with Jamie Noble and Joey Mercury, who are doing a nice little um, WWE Immortals mobile app commercial. They are. They know how to sell. <laughs> what you playing there? Oh, gosh. I can get it on my phone? For free? What? <laughs> I can do it right now? That's amazing. <laughs> can, can I ask you guys what you guys think of this game? Does it look appealing to you guys to play? I've played it. And then I deleted it. <laughs> oh, really? I, I don't. I've I, actually heard good things about the game. It looks good visually mm-hmm. and graphically, but I think um, the way it's being played is kind of stupid. You want to use a controller. You don't want to be on an app. Playing. Well, I'm 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 not the type of person who downloads you know different types of video games where you got to keep like tapping the screen or move like your mm-hmm. fingers around the screen. Like I don't do that for it, any I games, mean, and works, that's what you have to do with it this. It works for some games, but this is not the kind of game you want to be like that that's what I think mm. I have a very addictive personality so I know if I download it then there goes my life unless you don't like the game I love it well, I will say, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll like it okay well, <laughs> something very man, funny about please, it though. Yeah, I'm, I'm easy <laughs> some people know that I, I will say what's funny about it is that all the characters are very like warrior costumes well because the, the Mortal out. Kombat right so thing. it's like that yeah. But then Daniel Bryan is dressed like Daniel Bryan with <laughs> no t shirt. He's a jeans. warrior. He already looks like a Viking on his own. <laughs> and the Viking t shirt. There you go. Uh, Seth Rollins eventually comes out saying, You guys need to focus. Stop relaxing. I'm sick of hearing that I'm the future. I am the right now. Mm. I guess it's better than saying I'm the present because we hear that a lot. Yeah. Uh-huh. But it was like, Okay. Uh-huh. Rollins, Rollins is ready for a fight. He, he's yeah. ready to go. Okay. Big ups Fair to enough. Rollins because when the Shield was around, everybody said, "Oh, uh, Roman's going to be the next big thing. Ambrose is going to be up there too. You know, he's going to the next Piper or Pillman." But Rollins was, "Oh, he's going to be the good high flyer." Yeah, he's going to be. Oh, yeah, the the, the mid card guy. But yeah, he'll that, be around for a while, and then we'll forget about him, and he won't be around anymore. Exactly. But that's the guy but who has stepped been... up his game. And oh, I, know, not, yeah. I don't even see yes. Seth up his game. He's always been at that level. Mm-hmm. Anybody who's watched him before pre WWE, he's, just, he's yeah. proven himself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it just proves that he's that he belongs. Yes, definitely. Uh, Divas match: Bella's versus Paige and Natalia. I was really wondering heading into this why there's no Divas title match on the line, but I was pleasantly surprised with this match. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, obviously, all four of the Divas. Can deliver. Yeah. Natalia, that like deadlift into um, on her shoulders with I think it was Nikki. You mean the squat? The squat, like yeah, yeah just lifting all the way up uh, for the electric chair drop. Uh, really, really good match. I was surprised at the ending because no finisher happened. It was just yeah, Nikki's was forearm, which is usually her setup. Mm-hmm. And it's 
especially at a pay-per-view, you kind of want to see it. At least the rack attack. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at least hit hit Natalia with your finisher mm-hmm. to show that you're the dominant champion. But Bella's win, and now the question is, okay, does this mean Paige and Natalia fall back in line? I don't want that to happen. I mean, they're like probably the strongest, some of the strongest divas right out right now. And this was a good match. They gave the divas some time, you mm. know. They did. You would go to the bathroom and come back; they'd still be on. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> For once. <laughs> it's what we used to call the X-Pac match. During a pay-per-view, oh Xbox comes out, oh, bathroom time. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, and they had some good moves. Um, fortunately, there were some glitches on, you know, the network, but that's okay. And it was a good match. They put on a good show. I think the Bellas have probably been two of the most improved wrestlers in the past five yes, years. Yes, I will give them that. Um, maybe, Especially maybe, Nikki. Yeah, me. especially oh, Nikki. Absolutely, 100%. Um, for a while, I thought Brie was the better. I'm not comparing them to, but for Brie was better. But it's like, oh, well, she's going out with Dan- or married to Danielson. So obviously, maybe she's influenced Who's by that. Who's Danielson? I'm sorry, Daniel Bryan. Don't break a <laughs> um, <laughs> But then, yeah, Nikki, ever since she came back from that injury that she had, um, I forgot what it was. What it was. She oh, her, her calf. Her, or yeah, shin something, like, or something that. like that. She's really stepped up her game too. I mean, she. Mm-hmm. If if anybody. She's the powerhouse of the divas now. Yeah, exactly. She is a total diva. <laughs> This is true. That's yeah. She, they are the stars. Yeah. Of the so, so big ups to both of them who never. I never would have thought them as good wrestlers five years ago. So. Yeah. So if Paige and Natalia, if they do end up taking a back seat now because this little mini thing kind of mm-hmm. ended, who's going up next? Karma. <laughs> if only. Naomi. If, if only. Yeah. I wish. Naomi. I mean, is AJ I coming back Naomi. soon? I don't know. I don't. I, I miss her so much. I do. I mean, there's always got the... got their AJ t-shirt. Yeah, I love bites. There's always the two-month <laughs> run of Alicia Fox and whoever that mm. they do every now and then. Yeah, but Alicia Fox, they change. One week, we cheer her. The next week, mm-hmm. we boo her. Next week, we cheer her. Mm. And I love her to death. But, but, yeah, maybe and Naomi. she's good. Right. But I, unfortunately, I feel like that's the way with most of the divas. It's back and forth. Now the Bellas are good. Now they're bad. What do we do? They hate each other. Now they're best friends. Right. One of them wants to die in the womb. The other one <laughs> wants to punch her in the face. And, then yeah. and now they're sisters. She stole yeah. my ID card. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't gosh. tell anyone. That happened. Until now. <gasps> I, I love, she got grounded I love one of the comment, commentator's comments. I forget which one said it, but they, they used to be twins. It was awful. Oh, Okay. What? No. They used to. They changed. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I will say that five years ago, I could not tell them apart. Now, well, it's very it's, easily. It's, it's because of the yeah. tattoos. It's because of the yeah. hair and the hair too. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And cool. sometimes, well, yeah. It has to be okay. It's obviously not just the hair. It's okay. Yeah. It's the tits and the. Well, I, I, mean, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I, 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 I only I look at. What you're talking about. I only look at women from here up. I look at their eyes. For those of you listening, he is he, pointing to like belly the belly I, I look at their that's, eyes, thank that, you. That's a shame because we have beautiful belly. bodies. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just look at the divas for their personality. <laughs> oh, okay. I look at them because they are the best wrestlers that they have in the WWE. Best right? answer on this panel. There you go. Hey, NXT's got some pretty good divas. <laughs> they do. They sure. do. Oh, maybe, maybe Charlotte will be next. I saw I hope, hashtag I hope, blue pants. Blue pants. <laughs> I hope Bailey comes up soon. I love Bailey. You do? I, I love yeah. her to death. Mm. Bailey could... If they do do it correctly, she could be a female John Cena. Yeah, we talk about this all the time on uh, in our chat room where, yeah, Bailey, I see her doing the Make-A-Wish Foundations and uh, uh, yeah. getting requested and the t-shirts and the hug. Her gimmick is hugging everyone. How are little girls not going to love that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> right. And that reminds me, I know we'll get into it, but in the Rumble, no NXT. Yeah, uh, I was surprised about that, surprising. too. Very surprising. I figured there would be at least one NXT right. person. But none, none. Um, Let's get into this triple threat match. Okay. Seth Rollins, John Cena, Brock Lesnar for the WWE World Heavyweight title. <coughs> I, I could very well, in fact, I might do this because my recent memory, I'm going on record and saying this might have been, <coughs> I, I keep like correcting myself. Are this you okay? Was, Hold on, are you Dan, okay? Daniel Weiss oh, no, is dying. I'm, I'm choking on the ending of the Royal Rumble. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> God, when we actually talk about it, I'm afraid for your life. <laughs> oh, I might have an aneurysm. <laughs> This triple threat match was the best triple threat match I remember ever watching on a pay-per-view. Oh, wow. Wow. Like More than uh, the triple threat from WrestleMania? This past WrestleMania? Yeah. Oh, God, yes. Oh, wow. By a mile. Really? I loved this match. I, loved I mean, it was, a, it was a fantastic match. The story that they told with Lesnar just mm-hmm. being superhuman. Cena trying to you know pull through. How is he still in this match? 
and Rollins cementing his role as a main eventer. Uh-huh. The spots that he was pulling, I think he got the highest off of the top rope I have ever seen to land on to uh, Brock on the announce table. No one's made that jump. I mean, only Shane McMahon, I think, is anywhere <laughs> right. close to doing that leap as well as Seth Rollins did on that announce right. table. It was, I mean, and the the Phoenix jump that he pulled. The uh, I forget exactly what it's called. But, oh, the, uh, the Moonsault 450? Yes. Yeah. That was incredible. Mm-hmm. I mean, just so many great things. How many German suplexes did Lesnar give in this match? I lost count after 772. Uh, to start it <laughs> off with them was amazing. He just came in and was like, hey, how's it going? In, boom, my, boom, boom, in boom. my head, I was thinking, hey, man, suplex, repeat, suplex, repeat, <laughs> yeah. suplex, repeat. Yeah. Eat, sleep, suplex, repeat. <laughs> That'll be tomorrow. Yeah, we're going to have sure. that tomorrow. <laughs> just so many great, I mean, an AA with Lesnar kicking out at one. Oh, man, that was awesome. That was so great. <laughs> and the fact that uh, Rollins got pinned, saying, no, he is not getting up with the money in the bank. Like, this yeah. is it. That did surprise me, that there was me no too. money in the bank even attempt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I was thinking, um, I mean, I was even thinking that Lesnar, even if he beats Rollins, maybe Cena happens to hop in there, hits one more move, and then Rollins hops back up. But mm-hmm. That's what I was saying. It's, it kind of was like he's out cold. I was partially thinking that maybe Heyman was going to turn, hit Brock with the belt, and then Rollins mm-hmm. would come in. That would have been interesting. My, 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 my prediction was Lesnar retains, and then Heyman turns on him and Rollins cashes in. Mm-hmm. That's what I just said. But that was <laughs> kind of. Um, he hit him with the briefcase. You said title. I don't know. Um, but this kind of summed up my entire predictions night where I was wrong. Were well, you wrong in everything? Not everything. Okay. I was wrong in... Most? Probably half. Okay. Pretty good for you. That's improvement. Wow. <laughs> wow. Really. Sorry. Really. We are no longer friends. Were we ever? Yeah, that's right. That's right. We just turned into a morning zoo. That's got, <laughs> this got awkward. This is how we converse. Okay. Yeah, the, these two aren't normally on Thursdays. They're, oh. not, they're not quite used to this. Thursdays. But, but I know, Corey, Thursday. so I know how it goes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, this, this triple threat. I agree. It, it, w- it was awesome. Good. It was real good. It was fantastic. And I always, and I always despise the rare year where a rumble is not the final match of the night. Mm-hmm. But this year, I feel like, oh, you know what? It could have made sense if they made this match last mm-hmm. because right. they, they delivered to keep so us on well. Our toes. No. Well, of course. That's the point. What I was thinking, though, that could have been <laughs> interesting, and it doesn't matter now because it didn't <laughs> happen. But if Rollins, if you know, Rollins lost, uses Money in the Bank, got the title, and then Lesnar entered himself into the Royal Rumble and won, and that, been that was about where I was and watching. I would have liked that better than what happened. Where where I was watching, that was an idea that came up. Another thought was Rollins suddenly came in at like number thirty in the Rumble himself mm-hmm. or something right. like that. To so, have two shots. Yeah, all of a sudden he's got it, Money in the Bank and the main event right. spot of Mania. And what would have happened too if he did win the title? Without using the money in the bank, then he's like, "Well, he's I guess we'll proof. never right. know. <laughs> I guess we'll never know." So we've all gotten pretty, you know. It's it's been a while since Lesnar has been, been a champ. Are you guys cool with him being champ at this point? Have you guys gotten used to it? Yes, I like the fact that there's every week on Raw there isn't this. Well, the champ's here. The <laughs> champ's gonna fight. Oh, now he's gonna maybe lose, but he's not going to. Okay. The fact that it's this thing on top of a hill that everyone's actually trying to fight for because it's not here. Yeah. I I've always enjoyed him as champion, but I want him there more. I'm not saying he has to be there every week cuz mm-hmm. you, know, you should make the champion a special attraction by all means. But this was the first time he defended the title in like 3 months. Mm-hmm. Right. That's unacceptable to, to me. You. I agree. There is that classic 30-day rule to defend the title. I would just love if one day we're tuning in Raw, all of a sudden you see just Fandango already in the ring, you know, getting ready for action. All of a sudden, Lesnar's music randomly hits. Mm-hmm. He's going, Heyman grabs the mic. All right, this is one title defense in 30 days. Mm-hmm. Beats him in a minute. Leaves. That'd be great. Gone for another 30 yeah. days. Just like, because then okay. it still was af- emphasis, the surprise appearances, and still, still sticking with the rules. Because I'm all about the rules. <laughs> and then, but what would be cool if they did that was to pull that every month comes out. 
they get some lower card guy. Right. But then they get a lower card guy that beats him. Nobody expects it. It's a big push for that guy. Mm -hmm. yeah. who, who would you want from lower card to beat Brock Lesnar? Brock Lesnar! I love saying Brock Lesnar. Eric Lesner. Rowan. Brock Lesnar. Mm. Okay. Eric Rowan to beat Brock Lesnar? Would you Lesner? expect it? No. <laughs> Is that what you're trying to go for, by the way? He's going with an. No, I've he been, has to shave his head first. <laughs> well, right. he can start with this part. Okay. What did the chat roll think of the triple threat match? Um, mixed feelings. Um, really? But they definitely disagree with you saying that it's the best match. Oh, the best triple match. threat yeah, match I think you're exaggerating. ever. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, have they named any others? And are they exaggerating uh, yes, on his they opinion? Did. Okay, what do they name? But it's way up here, and I don't know if we want to say name. Uh, Night Train says. You know, Chris Benoit versus HBK. I don't know, I don't know who that is. I don't know who that um, is. That was, a, that was also a very good triple threat match. <laughs> that was a very good one on one match between yeah, Triple H and exactly. Michaels. Okay. That's how, that's how it looked like in the record books. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Where that match had no winner. So. <laughs> All right. Well, we, we only got about 10 minutes or so left. Let's. We got to get into this rumble, and there are so many oh my God. key points, uh -huh. and we got to cram it all into 10 minutes, apparently. Uh, first off, we kind of touched on that when Steve called earlier. Bubba Ray oh, came in at number three. That was awesome. Definitely the first mark out. There's always going to be a few mark out moments of the night, especially in the Rumble. Uh, that was the first. Yeah. Uh, for a second, though, I was going back to the number one, number two. Miz was number one. Truth was number two. I really did think that Miz Dow was going to be number two. That would have made sense. Uh, mm -hmm. Right. But instead, we got the awesome truth. At we one we and got two. the awesome truth. Which was awesome and But funny. I thought mm. it built up a great bit of when Ms. Dow did come out, and then Ms. Yeah. came out and said, no, I'm taking this. Yeah. Yeah. But then Ms. Dow was only in for a minute. Right. That was very disappointing. Yeah, yeah. I agree. And then they cut away at the best part of the rumble, which was uh, Ms. yelling at Ms. Dow and Ms. Dow yelling at the Ms. as Ms. Yeah, yeah. yelling at Ms. Dow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then that they cut away. <laughs> uh, and then... So then, along with that, we also have then R Truth playing the role of Devon Dudley. I, I did like the whole like I don't know if because he did it because he was black, but it kind of like wait right. you you, you I guess you looked like Devon, but not really. Right. But let's do it anyway. You're, you're in a little better shape than yeah. Devon. <laughs> but there were well, it doesn't exist if it doesn't happen in WWE. But they were in TNT together. TNA. Oh, T that one. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like they weren't on Monday Nitro. No. Yeah. What do you? <laughs> no, t yeah, but I thought what once I realized that Devon was not coming out, that was great because that's what we want to see. Just do the spots. I mean, I, I I I do agree to some extent. Uh, it definitely would have been a little weird had Devon come out later, because um, right. it's kind of like the initial pop was yeah. was there when Bubba came out. Um, it would have been good if Devon came in at number four. The one right yeah, out. exactly. Right. Or, or if they came out together, but Devon waited by the ring. Yeah. And then they called it, and then sure. the number ran out, and I mean, he came in. If they're gonna bring up, if they were gonna bring both of them back, I kind of mentioned it uh, a couple, few weeks ago. I know, I know he knows what I'm talking about. Where you had Ascension come out every week, you know, dissing the Road Warriors demolition. They should have had the Dudley Boys come out yes. uh, together. They still could. Can. Yeah, yeah, maybe uh, of tomorrow. Course. But I thought it would have been a, a cool pop in Philly. You know, after Ascension squatches outlaws, they get on the mic saying, oh, see, we're better than this, we're better than that. The Lee boys come out, nice little feud, you know, a month or two or whatever. So, But it, it was still cool for what it was. I mean, Bubba, I think he tweeted, like, you know, home, this is home. Uh, now nah, I belong home. So we'll see where we go. This, we'll see if they bring back Devon. We'll see if Bubba gets that singles run that he's been bring wanting. Bring back little Spike. Bring back little <laughs> Spike. <laughs> uh, let's also talk about now, like, in my mind, the MVP of the Royal Rumble this year, Bray Wyatt. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Bray Wyatt dominated this Rumble, and even more so than what I expected. Mm -hmm. I despise the way he was eventually eliminated at the end. Yes. But this was what we wanted mm -hmm. out of Bray. At one point when he was the only one in the ring, and I was just yelling at, the, at everyone I was with, give him a mic, give him, yeah. and eventually they did, and yeah. we got exactly what we wanted. That was pretty cool. Yeah, and, and, and the length that he lasted, he was there good mm -hmm. 40 some odd minutes in that Rumble this year. And Definitely the workhorse of the Rumble. Mm -hmm. And having him with uh, Rowan and Harper. That was, was the real fantastic. cool part, too. All of a sudden, and then Harper, Harper's there, Wyatt having a stare down. And I wanted Curtis Axelin so badly. <laughs> oh, dear. But then Rowan just randomly took a spot. Refs aren't stopping him. That was great. Yeah, all right. Oh, yeah. Okay, was... okay, Rowan's, you're in, you're in the rumble after all, I guess. I don't know if that's easy. Right. Yeah. yeah. Next, time, ne next, time, next time I'll be the one that uh, takes someone's spot next year. 
If you can handle any of them. Oh yeah, probably not. Yeah. I'm, and I was I was a little surprised though how short Harper was in the Rumble. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm not surprised about Rowan, but Harper did surprise me. Well, I think mm-hmm. they got what they needed out of it. They got the moment. They eliminate mm-hmm. each other. Mm-hmm. It was fine. Mm-hmm. I like the standoff, how they were all staring at each other. It was right. really yeah. exciting. And they cemented it because mm-hmm. Bray let them go. There was never really a... Even though one guy's on the a heel, one guy's a face, are they really against each other? Now we see, okay, Rowan is being put against by yeah. the, mm-hmm. the Wyatts. Yeah. Then we got to go and talk about Daniel Bryan. Mm. So mm. this, so he, he has number ten. So where is the want, want, want? <laughs> the want, want, want sound. You can make that sound pretty well, can't you? Yeah. Here we go. One, two, three. Oh, you got uh, it. Womp, womp, womp. That's yeah, the womp, you. womp, womp. The funny thing is, Daniel is now fired because he failed that. No. All right. Well, I'll see you guys. Oh, oh, there, we there go. it is. Oh, beautiful. So he comes in, like George was saying, at number ten, which is like, all right, this guy's going the distance. Great having him be the one guy that Bray won't be able to eliminate mm-hmm. right away. Right. All right, Dan O'Brien's here to deliver. And he was. And he was kicking ass, taking names, doing all the Dan O'Brien stuff that we expect to do. And then, boop, gone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, huh? He just like, pushed over. Just there you go. The way he went over. Was we all, where I was literally just like, wait, wait, what, what happened? It was like, we're, we're like halfway through the Rumble right now. How is he eliminated now? Right. Mm-hmm. And it's not even the fact that he didn't win. I think that was why Philly's mad, because he didn't win. Same thing the last year. But it was kind of anticlimactic. This is the perfect time to build towards something. You know, They should have had somebody eliminate right. him. Or eliminate in a way where it's building towards something or a program. Got, with right. Let him have a standoff with whoever yeah. he's going to build distract, a feud with. Someone distract him that yeah. they're going to build a feud with. He gets eliminated from but that. And makes n- sense. None of the above. Story. Nothing. Yeah, he went out like... Could have been Zack Ryder or something. You yeah, know? yeah, and then it was yeah, it was just, and I don't even think really the the commentators are like, oh, Dan O'Brien's been eliminated. Uh, da, 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 here we go. Right. It was just. It, it almost feels like the WWE's mad at the fans right Unless now. Unless something went wrong, <laughs> you never know. Maybe yeah. you're supposed to skin Maybe. the cat. It's Maybe he got possible. I I doubt it. It didn't you look that know. way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and it was just so, I mean, with Daniel Bryan chance going throughout the rest of the Rumble, it's kind of, di- you know, difficult hmm. to ignore it. Looks like we're going to see another triple threat this year. They can't, but that yeah, ruins, the, that yeah, ruins last year. the legitimacy of winning the Rumble. Right. Is your chair shrinking? Probably is. <laughs> I always get the chairs that shrink. I just Corey realized. is currently taller than me. This is an oddity? Okay. That's fine. I, I mean. I'm here to point out. Things that make you feel awkward. That's right, because later on I might I might be standing up and <laughs> speaking about this. Uh, DDP makes an appearance. That was fun. Very nice. <laughs> Several diamond cutters. Yeah. Three. Yeah, and and actually like effective ones, like was countering moves into mm-hmm. diamond cutters. I That's wanted fifty six. Randy... Is that how old the guy is? I mean, Dude, D- DDP yoga works. It does. I wanted Orton to come in yeah. and have that been a pretty cool. diamond cutter RKO at the same time on each other. <laughs> and the world explodes. Is that even? Yes. Yeah, I, I, don't worry about it. Just it. Be, okay. It'd just be jumping neck breakers at that right. point. <laughs> It'd be great. <laughs> but yeah, it was great to see him. He looked he was great. In a good amount of time. Yeah, he had he had his time in there. What about the boogeyman? Yeah, what, what about him? I think he was in the rumble. What? Yeah, he was. He was. Yeah. he was. They did the mind games thing, and it, honestly, it was all of a sudden. What, if anyone. Why put him in with Wyatt, though? Because Wyatt's the one guy perfect. who would not be scared I, of him. That's what I was saying. I, I think thought it was perfect, Wyatt too. Sh- but I think they could have played with it more. I yeah. think they should have had a stare down, and then Wyatt immediately throws him out. He practically did. Right, which is fine. He clothesline thrown out of the ring. Great. Because, really, do you care about the boogeyman? Did you really <laughs> need to see more of him? Oh, yes. Were you hoping he was going to pull some uh, worms out? Yes. <laughs> Look. Yes, it was. Christian, raise your chair. Yes, I can see the sign that's off camera that we're now supposed to read out loud. <laughs> you you should have took, so thank you. You thank took you the hint that. when I told wait, you. Is, is she, your wait, chair She's now thinking? writing, Kaori, stop po- pointing out signs no. off camera. <laughs> she's not. She's saying, I love you, Kaori. Thank you. See, there you go. Was that the middle finger? <laughs> Who knows? Mm-hmm. Is that two Look middle fingers? Look at these fingers? lying men in here. All right. All right, well. I mean, yeah, so once Brian got on <laughs> yeah, thank you. it was a little... Like it was like, oh, okay, here we go. Here, here goes the crowd, and I just, it just, it did kind of go downhill. Not the match itself, but the crowd. You can just tell that they were not feeling it. Everyone was upset. Yeah. And, and that point, I was just like, I'm like, come on. The only way that the crowd will get back into it is, come on, Ziggler. Yeah. Come I on, agree. Ziggler. But we don't get to him yet. We get to Reigns, who, <laughs> Reigns comes in. What did he come in? Nineteen. Yeah, nineteen. Came in at number nineteen. 
and already they were already booed out the building before he even got in the ring. Didn't matter who he touched. Even more so last year, because a lot of people are already comparing it to last year, where Batista, they were kind of booing him, but I think they started to hate him even more once they realized Daniel Bryan uh, wasn't the number 30th, because Mysterio ended up being number 30. Right. Now, this year, when by the time Roman already came in, Bryan was in the room when he was already gone. Right. So it's kind of like, the, it, it was automatic hatred, even though, based on what Steve said, they were already hating it from the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean. Well, luckily we don't have to put up with him for the rest of the few months before WrestleMania, right? I mean, we're not going to. Well, see he's too much just going to be him. an afterthought of the world to WrestleMania, right? Right. Oh, yeah, about that. I wonder honestly, because at the end when The Rock had to save him, uh, at, after everything, if anybody watched on the app, the after show, he just has no mic skills. Roman Reigns, and is that mm -hmm. really who you want to? be going to WrestleMania? When Roman Reigns first came out, when mm -hmm. he came on the scene, I was pretty much adamant on, okay, this is our new Batista. He's got a great look. Mm -hmm. He's powerful. He can put on good matches, but he lacks... Charisma? Some charisma, the mic skills. Right. And it's just like, he's going to be there because he has the look. And that's exactly what they did with Batista, and that's exactly what we're getting with Reigns. Because then we go down to our final... Well, technically it was our final five, but it looked like our final four, mm -hmm. which ended up being Big Show, Kane, Reigns, and Ambrose. Mm -hmm. And no one thought this would be the final four. In a lot of ways, that could be great. See, I thought it was going to be four. like Ambrose, Reigns, Brian, and Ziggler. And I, I thought that was, when I was thinking, I was like, there's no way Ziggler, the way, the way they've been building up with Ziggler going over at Survivor Series with Brian being Brian, I thought those were going to be the final four. I thought Man, was, was I be, wrong. I thought it was going to be Brian, Kane, Big Show, maybe another heel, mm -hmm. and then Sting comes in and saves him. Mm -hmm. Gee, and initially, none of that happened. If you think about it, I was thinking, why not have Ziggler? But I think they knew that the crowd was going to go bonkers for Ziggler, for Brian. Mm -hmm. So had they would have been in the end with Reigns, I think it would have crapped on more on Reigns, yet... They crapped them in anyways, but that's why I think they had Big Show and Kane at the end and then Rock save him because they thought that was going to give a positive heat toward Reigns and still backfired. But did, yeah, it did backfire because even Rock, The Rock comes yeah. out and we were all like, oh, come on, yeah. instead of, oh my gosh, it's The Rock, you know. This is tragic. This is, this is the biggest part that, that annoys me because WrestleMania 30 was supposed to be kind of like, you know, the true cementing into the future because mm -hmm. like each big one. 10, the big one was, you know, kind of like Bret Hart leading. Yeah. 20, I mean, who knows who it was. 30 <laughs> was, you know, Daniel Bryan. Mm -hmm. So that's supposed to start into we're building the future. Because even after 20, it was like Cena but Batista the following year, and that was again, That was the build. Future. They're yeah. the future. Those are the guys now. Yeah. Great. Fine. Ziggler didn't do a damn thing in this Rumble. No. Ambrose did not do a damn thing in this Rumble. Yeah. Rusev even though he was technically second, did not do really a damn thing it was in the Rumble. That last thing was even anticlimactic. For a second, I was like, maybe Rusev? Maybe Rusev? Wait, talk about anticlimactic. What about Titus O'Neil? <laughs> oh, God. Well, they always have to have somebody that gets knocked out. And he would have gotten knocked out earlier if they didn't <sighs> mess up. If they didn't up. mess it up. Yeah. And the other thing goes, like I said, why it was overall the MVP, but the way yeah. it was eliminated looked terrible. Harper, not used at all in this Rumble. Cesaro. Cesaro, Cesaro. not used at all in this Rumble. Kid, not used at all in this Rumble. Kofi was very lazy in his elimination save this year, thanks to the right. Rosebuds. We got some great stuff, though, from Golden Stardust. I enjoyed everything. I really wanted did. Dusty to come in there as, like, an entrant after that. <laughs> but <laughs> my, my point in all this was... We have to build a future. And the entire last 15 minutes of this Royal Rumble was how dominant the two oldest men in the WWE right. are in Big Show and Kane. Sure. They have no other giants right now. The biggest guy in NXT is Colin Cassidy, and he is not a giant. <laughs> this is... Biggest guy in the room. Well, yeah. but they have Rowan, and they're not using him as a giant. Not using Rowan as a giant. If you put him up giant. next to Big Show, Big Show's not that much taller than him. Jack Swagger's 6'8". Right. I mean, he could be considered a and big he dude. Was, he was, nobody cared about him. Well, yeah. Hmm. But my, again, you want to build in the future, and you had literally Big Show just throw deadweight Ziggler yeah, out of the like, ring. Yeah, it was like, knock out You punch. throw deadweight yeah. Wyatt out of the ring. You team up and throw Ambrose out of the ring. Everyone, it was just why Rusev should have done that. Right, that would have been better because he is the young guy. 
Now, again, I'm, a lot of people are going to be like, well, Reigns is a young guy and he won. Yes, he won. But like I said, he's going to be like the Batista. Who's going to be the Cena? Who's going to be the Randy Orton? We don't have those yet because they're still burying them under Big Show and Kane. Right. And, and it could have been Rusev. And I think that if you're going to have somebody who you think is out, but he went under the bottom rope and he comes back like Rusev did, he should win. Then have him versus Reigns. What was the point of, of, of him doing that? Right. All of a sudden he comes he in. He came in and he's out. Gets hit with a spear out of the ring. Uh, can I ask you guys, were you guys always not fans of Reigns? Because I felt like there was a huge momentum for him. I, I, I really, him. I really, I still like yeah. Roman Reigns. So I, what happened where it's, he's like such a disappointment? He's not, they gave him a microphone and said, be like The Rock. Yes. And he mm -hmm. is not The Rock. Okay. It's not he even is that. stronger. I think a lot of it's they timing. A, a lot of, a lot of, and we all know this as fans, timing. Bill Goldberg had a very similar uh, gimmick. He didn't talk. He didn't really have much charisma. But the timing was there. I think when they try to blatantly tell us that Roman Reigns is going to be the guy, it's like a lot of fans are saying, whoa, don't tell us what to do. That happened last year. Mm -hmm. Daniel Bryan got into that slot. That's because, you know, but now it's like the same thing. Now they're trying to say, here's Roman. Here's the guy who just got back from an injury a month ago, yeah. already getting pushed to the moon. It's like, well, you got Daniel Bryan, who's the workhorse. Um, he, he's you know putting on match and every single year, and R Roman Reigns isn't really doing that yeah. yet. Yeah, and, and and yeah, the microphone thing too. And I mean, physically, Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar, they're going to yeah. <laughs> Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns will have a good match. Mm -hmm. I'm not questioning that at all. The problem is all this buildup, Daniel, like you were saying. Now we have to have Reigns have a microphone every right. single There's week no to build potential. this up. None. The at least of... unless they find some way quickly. One of the greatest WrestleMania matches in the past 20 years, I would say, is the second time that Undertaker took on Shawn Michaels mm -hmm. when they had the good versus the evil. Uh -huh. And Michaels came out in the white mm -hmm. and do all the, cut all these promos. A lot of people consider that the greatest WrestleMania match ever. Yes, exactly. I think their first one was. So, that, 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 that was the good versus evil. That when he came out in yes. the white, that was 25, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah 25 yes. was their first one. Yeah. So yeah. you're not going to get any of that because neither of them can cut a pro. And that's why people were so mad no, Paul Heyman. about... Hopefully. Heyman will, but still... <laughs> But what, are they going to have The Rock come out and cut Reigns' promos? Yeah, is that Rock going to be in Reigns' corner? Right, that was part of the whole thing that I had a problem with, with Lesnar beating Undertaker. There was no build-up. There was no, you know, even if you have Heyman going, this is our time, Brock's going to do this every single week. Cut, you know, cut them in a graveyard where they're, you know, pulling, uh, pushing... Undertaker's gimmick right back at him. But they didn't do any of that. So I, when he won, it's like, who cares? I'm not going to get into the whole scripting promos or anything like that, but when Roman Reigns talks, it sounds very bland. You know, right. he can say all the right things, but it just sounds very scripted. You know, I'm going to come and punch as, you. As opposed to Daniel Bryan a few weeks ago when he announced that he was coming back, it sounded a lot more real. It could have been scripted, you know, but mm -hmm. it sounded a lot more real, more passionate. Like, it, just the delivery of it was right. a lot more heartfelt. You don't see that with Roman Reigns. And what was one of the best promos ever? That. Was CM Punk just sitting in the middle of the, the ring? Bomb. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And just and I honestly, as someone who's been watching wrestling my entire life, there was a part of me where I was like, "Is this real?" And I know it's not, but it makes you feel. But that it, way. And it, it doesn't matter if it's scripted; it's a matter of the delivery of it. Yes, that's what and I'm I saying. And I think yeah, a lot of people see through that in Roman Reigns, because um, The Rock was the, very much so the same way 15 years ago. But the delivery of his promos was, you know, up, upper level. Yeah. And at the end of the day, when The Rock makes a surprise appearance in Philly mm -hmm. to save Roman Reigns, Rock hasn't been at a Royal Rumble. Well, it's been a few years, I guess. But <laughs> two years, yeah. Yeah, it's only been two years now that I think about <laughs> it. But the fact he was not advertised to be there. Mm -hmm. The Rock suddenly shows up. Huge pop. And you still can't get Roman yeah. Reigns over. If The Rock can't do it, <clears throat> You're no one can right now. Not a soul. It should be fun. To Does anyone in the this. chat role think he can? Well, they're not talking about that, about The Rock, but they are very upset. Are they talking about yeah, America? It should be a very interesting road to WrestleMania. Yeah. I mean, this is not the road. I mean, this was the predictable road, but not the road that the majority of people wanted. Now, there is still fast lane. Maybe things can change. Maybe. But it's a matter of how. Yeah, I mean, I agree. It, but we have fast lane. Um, I mean, that's I what know. I just said. I know. I'm just <laughs> well, we do have fast lane. Do we? I think I thought, so. What happened, um, to, what happened to Elimination Chamber? 
Which is I so know. sad that there's no elimination change. Don't have that match again. It's just now they don't have two titles. So fast lane sounds so cheese balls. It's frustrating. Uh, they better play life in the fast lane. <laughs> they better. I don't know. I mean, if you were the I booker, what would you what would you do with Rump? Now that everything's done, I'm not a big fan of criticizing things just because it didn't go my way. Oh, boo hoo! Worst WrestleMania, worst Royal Rumble ever because Brian didn't win. I mean, I'm not that kind of person. I'm right. like, hey, it happened. It's done. Yep. We can't change it. What do you do now? Go yeah. to Disney World. Let's go. Let's do it. Uh, I mean, yeah, with, yeah. What do you do with Roman Reigns? You got to build him up for Brock Lesnar. There, you know, the rumors are saying he'll have a last man standing match with Big Show. Okay, I mean, it'll be good. I'm, I mean, I think it will be an entertaining match. But how's that going to build up for Lesnar? What's yeah. Lesnar going to be doing? Is he just going to be at home and Paul Heyman's going to talk for the next three months? I don't want to see him feuding with Big Show. That's lame. He's been feuding. They haven't had their payoff yet. That's mm-hmm. why it's lame. How you guys are the only right thing now. that they could possibly do, and I'm sure they will, is every week Roman Reigns is, has to come out and call out Lesnar for not being there and call him out to the ring and not, not have him come. That's the only thing they could do with him. Maybe. There's, there's, this pay-per-view left a lot of questions. And starting tomorrow night on Raw, really on the road to WrestleMania, and we're going to have to see... Where it goes. And we'd like to see what you guys thought of this mm-hmm. chat. So make sure, again, you leave comments on YouTube and iTunes and SoundCloud. Make sure you subscribe to all those. And, of course, follow us on the wonderful world of social media where we can keep the conversation going. George, once again, how can people reach out to you? Is it up yet? Can I point to it right there? <laughs> at G Hermosa. <laughs> G Hermosa. At, uh, you people on iTunes listening, that's at uh, shift to G-H-E-R-M-O-Z-A. What wow. the heck? He, I know, I, I you get what he did. just lost it. Okay. I get what he did. All right. <laughs> Daniel. Uh, you can find me at It's Daniel Weiss on Twitter. Cool. Yeah. I just want to say that everyone was mentioning t- um, that the hashtag cancel WWE Network has been trending like oh, wow. hard. Wow. Hardcore. So people are pissed about this outcome. That, can I say piss in front of you? No. It's too late. Right. Just making sure. All right. What, so, you, what is that supposed to mean? You can find me <laughs> cussing maybe at K A O R I O U S on Twitter as well as Instagram. All yeah. right. And you can follow me on Twitter at Real Rosenberg. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to the Royal oh, Rumble cool. After Buzz. For George Hermosa, Daniel Weiss, and Corey Takei, I am Christian Rosenberg. And we'll see you on the road to WrestleMania. Peace out, Holmes. From executive producers Maria oh, Menounos, <laughs> Kevin Navarro, <laughs> Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Bye. 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 See you later. Yeah, later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.